Hello! Oh, I'm wearing salmon today. Anyway, yes, uh, I'm trying to do this intro quickly before this tier lights in the background. This is us going to be testing the stock here. My two heaters joined together and... and... oh, there it is. And the 3D printed aluminium heat exchanger. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna do all the testing and write it all down. I'm not gonna film everything, uh, so my test will be standard here, a 3D printed, an end piece thing here that goes on the end, so I can put the anemometer in the end, so it gives it a better, we'll basically be in the same place on every heater. Just slot that in and take a reading. Our readings might not be exact, that's, but they'll be comparable. So even if they're wrong, they're wrong for all of them, and there'll be a comparable wrongness, but we'll get the same, you know, a comparable result at the end. Basically the test's gonna be air intake temperature, air output temperature, uh, wind speed output, and I'll put the gas analyzer in the exhaust silencer, and we'll get an exhaust gas temperature reading and the carbon monoxide reading. Right, so that heater's lit, which means that I'm now going to leave it for half an hour to get fully heat soaked and fully up to temperature, and then I'll start taking readings. And I'll bring you back if anything exciting happens or once I've taken all the readings. Right, that is all the tests complete, and I've collected all of the data on my cardboard data analysis tablets. A uh, few things I have noticed, well, I've definitely made some errors in measurement, but the important ones, which we will look at in graph form and data back on the computer, are the important ones that we'll, we'll cover. But one thing I had to have, I have made a mistake in my design. So the original four kilowatt heater body measures the hot body temperature, sort of a few, like, I don't know, like 10 centimetres in from the end of the, you know, the end of the heat exchanger. But I erroneously thought that it would be hot enough that I could just put the temperature sensor back where it sort of should be, no, we're not sure it should be, like the wire's that length. So it reaches to here, so I just put it here, but when I put it here, uh, it won't start. Well, well, no, it will start, but this bit doesn't get up to temperature fast enough, so the heater thinks it's flamed out. So I needed to make the wires longer and move it back down to where it's supposed to be, which is, you know, 10 centimetres from the end. Wires made a bit longer, put it there, ran perfectly fine after that. It does mean that I did have to butcher the said 3D print. Also, another note, the aluminium that that 3D print is made of, it's, it's tough, it's like hard aluminium, it's... I was, I was using the Dremel and like the die grinder bits, and it was just, it was like ignoring, the die grinder bits are sharp, but this was, this was uh, something else. Right, oh yeah, I had to obviously 3D print a heater extension to put the burn, you know, so the end bit fits in and you still got the same length and same size holes and whatnot. If I can get this back out of here. Yeah. Very surprised this didn't melt. It's only PETG. Granted it got soft and there's a spot in there, I don't know if you can see it, where the heater's been touching it and it's uh, softened it a little bit, but there was definitely a smell of burning plastic without actually having any burning plastic, which is good. So there, I will bring you over for a look. I had to literally chisel out and dremel down a bit of the a hole into the heat exchanger body so I could put the temperature sensor, put a bit of um, thermal grease on the bottom of it, made the wires longer, they go inside and back and the thing and that lets it run it, well normally shall we say, it detects the temperature rise and stays running and stays lit and yeah my case fitment's a bit off so I don't know which bit about the model makes the case not quite fit properly, but I just used a bit of tape to make sure the gaps were all, you know, sealed and tight so all the air is going 
out that way. Uh, I was one of the, not, well I guess, the erroneous errors in measurement is the heater length between the 3D printed one and the two sort of welded together ones, they're not exactly the same length. But I sure wasn't as hell spending like another six hours printing a slightly shorter version of this to fit. Because when you put them together, the amount the heater pokes out the end or nearly pokes out the end is slightly different between the two variations. So it means I have a slightly different variation of temperature reading for the hottest hot air. But that shouldn't matter because the exhaust temperature is really where the information lies. Ours is just an erroneous measurement because you can't get the same spot because the distance is different between the end caps. But yeah, we got data, we got something and we'll get to go and look at the numbers now. We'll go inside, we will look at the data and I'll make pretty graphs to show you. All right, let's go, oh God, let's go inside. All right, here we are on the computer. Computer. And here are some, uh, well, here is the tables that I have made of the data, what we have collected. We've got the stock here, the two fours down together, and the 3D print. And the first column here we have is the cost. And this is just the cost, not including the rest of the heater, literally just the heat exchanger. So you can buy a stock 4 kilowatt heat exchanger for £17, and obviously, Two of them joined together is £34. Granted, plus a bit of welding you've got to... I haven't added that in, but that's a price to add in. And then from the PCB way printed... Uh, 3D printed aluminium heat exchanger, it is about £1,900 all in. So there's, that's quite a big jump in costs. I do have graphs, I will get to them in a, in a minute. Uh, right. So carbon monoxide output for them. There wasn't a huge variation. We've got like nine was the stock here, and then five and seven, so you're only like at best a variation of four. And then between the two big heaters, a variation of two parts per million of carbon monoxide, not a huge amount. Same with the CO2. Uh, this is a percentage of CO no, of CO2. 7.4, 7.7, 10.4. Not a huge variance. Same with the oxygen. Granted, on the 3D printer, it did drop 3%, which I think is better. Now, this this bit here is where we want this. This is where it's getting interesting. The exhaust temperature. Now, the stock one was 364. Uh, or two joined together, 287, and the 3D print, 260. So what that means is, if the exhaust temperature is cooler, that means the heat is not being wasted out of the exhaust, it's going into heating up the heat exchanger and heating the air. Now, and this, the column to the right of that is efficiency, and that is efficiency that's calculated by the TP, TPI gas analyzer. I don't know how it is, or what percentages, or rather what variances it counts for its percentage, but we're taking it as it's the same for all of them, so the change in efficiency must be correct. So we've gone from 76 on stock to 87% on the large, uh, the largest, I suppose it's largest, the 3D printed uh, version. Air output, this is the one where I'm pretty sure I got the, not the measurements wrong, but measuring became difficult. So 142 degrees, on the stock, 161 on the two joint together, and 140 on the 3D print. So that one is definitely wrong, because you can't have a lower than stock, but also still have a lower than exhaust temperature. This is because of the way it's set up. It's really hard to measure the air output between them, because they're not all the same size. I've not got, the, they're not, what's the, the probe isn't in the same place and all of them to, ma to maximise natural air output measuring. So I need a better system for measuring the hot air output. If anyone has any suggestions, please leave them down below on how we could measure the hot air output better. Body temperature, that's taken straight from 
the heater ECU itself, I was using the afterburner, but it doesn't matter. The display, the heater thinks the temperature is the same, whether it's the stock controller or the afterburner you're pulling the data from. So we went from 152 degrees on the stock, and basically the modified heaters were almost exactly the same body temperature. But uh, ambient air temperature was 15 degrees in the workshop. That was taken from a temperature probe sitting on the bench. It was 15 degrees the whole time we tested. Fan speed, there was a 10 RPM variance it would appear. Fuel was locked in at 4.8. And this was just a sort of, this last bit here was just me playing, trying to get an output calculation. But because the air output temperature is wrong for the 3D printed one, it throws the output way off for its calculation. Like it's less than the stock here, and we know it's not because of the exhaust temperature being lower. Let's have some charts. Charts are much easier to look at. So this is the efficiency as calculated by the TPI uh, gas analyzer. Stock, 76, two four stuck together, 82, and then the big 3D printed one, a nice 88. So an increase in efficiency with size. Perfect, that's what we want to see. Uh, up here is just a mixture of the CO, CO2 and O2s between the stock. Right, I know it's the tall number. The problem here is the blue columns are a value of parts per million and the other two columns are a percentage. So they're not comparable with the columns, but they're comparable with the other color of its column, like nine parts per million for a stock, five parts per million for the modified two stuck together and seven parts per million for the 3D printed one. And everything else, they're much a muchness and closeness. Now here is where we see the exhaust and the body temperature. So lower is better for the exhaust temperature. So there's a stock at 364 and two stuck together, 287 and 260 for the 3D printed one. And body temperature, higher is better. So stock, 152. And 180 and 178 for the 3D printed one. And again, the variance in body temperature could just be the placement of the sensor because I had to modify the 3D printed one just to put it down where it would pick up the heat enough that it would think it was lit. But the main, the main takeaway is a reduction in exhaust temperature. So we're putting in the same air, the same fuel, and we're getting less heat out of the exhaust, but without an increase in carbon monoxide. Where's carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide is pretty much stable between the like nine, five and seven. It's not like it's gone from 10 to 200, which would mean we've got a, cool, a cooler exhaust because it's not burning the fuel. It's still burning the fuel perfectly cleanly. It's just now the heat is going into the heat exchanger and not down and out of the exhaust. Uh, what does this mean in terms of uh, usefulness to anybody. Well, if you want to get more heat out of your diesel heater without using any more fuel, make the heat exchanger longer and make the burn chamber longer inside. You will automatically get more heat in the heat exchanger without using any more fuel. What, we'll, what we're going to do is look at this column and go, eh, what's, what's, what's the best way to do it? Well, it's probably not spending £1,900 on a 3D printed part for when like, if you can weld, or if you know somebody that can weld, I suppose anything less than 1900 would be a bargain to stick two, four kilowatts together and somebody to weld you a slightly longer burn chamber. The only other modification you'll have to make is to make your diesel heater housing a little bit longer. Again, that's not the end of the world. You could just chop up another heater body Man, so even if it was less than £100, even if it was less than £200, you're still going to end up with more output. Granted, we don't want to go, so your next best heater is going to be the giant uh, HLN 8 kilowatt that's currently on sale just now for 595 So you'd have to be in a lot less than 595 Unless, of course, you need the form factor of the 4 kilowatt heater. Like you've got in a camper van, you've already drilled, drilled holes in the floor. You could swap out, you know, two four stuck together. It'll still fit in that same space. You just need to make the space for the heat exchanger slightly longer. But 
it was interesting nonetheless that we managed to get more heat for the same fuel. Like, it's not magic and it's not over unity, it's just less heat getting wasted out of the exhaust. It's going in the heat exchanger and in the air rather than out in the atmosphere. Which makes me wonder now, how long could you make it? Like, if I could just keep joining fours onto the end and join, uh, that seems like a really, really a long project. I'm not sure I'm ready for that level of commitment just yet. Plus I'm not very good at aluminium welding and I've run out of argon, so yeah, none of those things will probably be happening anytime soon. But the next video will be running the big HLN 8 kilowatt and seeing how that compares to our two fours stuck together. I'm going to share all this this uh, thing here, I'm going to share it with, I'll put a link in the in the, the sherry bit, this bit, I'll share a link to this data, I'll put it in the description in case anybody wants to look at it, go over it, check it, that kind of thing, and ask questions. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave them down below, I will try my very best to answer them, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.